Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Art of Photography. My name is Ted Forbes, and today I wanna to talk about one of my favorite photographers and somebody who I think is extremely significant in the history of photography. I wanna talk about a woman by the name of Imogen Cunningham. And Imogen Cunningham, she's really interesting to me in the sense that she was born at a time where she was able to kind of come right into the bulk of the history of what we know as photography up through the 70s when she died. She was actually born in 1883, lived until the age of 93. And, you know, I think you can look at her career, which we're going to look at some images in a second, but she really fits into, I mean, a lot of times I talk about photographers and what kind of a range they have. And when I say that, I mean kind of a sense of versatility and a dynamic that their work really covers um, with this spectrum of what's possible um, with, with imaging. And imaging is, is certainly fits right into that because she's got an extremely wide range. I think a lot of it is a lot of the time she lived through and a lot of really the developing history of photography. So in her work, you're going to see everything from like early pictorialism stuff um, on you know through portraits uh, botanical still lives up into really what's become known today as street photography uh, she's an extremely prolific photographer shot her entire life and I really think she's important on a number of levels uh, you know also being one of the early just extremely successful female photographers I think is worth mentioning too because uh, I think she was born into a time where she may have been a bit of a disadvantage of that but you know, coming up through the whole pictorialism movement, which we've talked about before on this show, it's been a little while, uh, but you might want to go check out those episodes as well when you're done with this one, because I think uh, you, it really makes sense into seeing her development as an artist. And, you know, she was one of those people who picked up a camera and she was really inspired by the work of Gertrude Keshbeer, which is a photographer who I think was extremely good, who I did talk about in that pictorialism episode. And being inspired by her work and moving on and some of the people she associated with and actually got to to work with during her lifetime. Uh, she went on to work for Edward S. Curtis, who is one of the amazing early American photographers, did a lot of work, um, you know, portraits of Indians and really significant stuff. Uh, went on later on to work with Ansel Adams and hung out with everybody from Weston to Stieglitz to you name it. And she really had this big circle of people who were really important in photography that she kind of kept up with around. Um, her work ranges, uh, there's kind of four distinct sections you could kind of, you know, categorize her work in. She did a lot of work with still life botanicals. She did a lot of work with nudes. Um, she also did some industrial type still lives, uh, the kinds of stuff you did, saw Charles Sheeler working with. And then also this kind of street photography angle to things too. And I think she's particularly interesting because you have one person who kind of stretched across four mediums like that or four different types of subject matter. There are similarities I think you see in some of her work compositionally. And when we look at her work in a second, we will um, uh, take a look at what some of those components are. Um, also very interesting too, you know, being a fine art photographer and doing a great deal of showing her work at various galleries and museums throughout her career. She was also extremely prolific, uh, kind of in the Ansel Adams sense as a printer. She printed her own work. And as an author, she uh, studied in Europe, I believe in Germany, uh, when she worked on her master's thesis, which was on palladium printing or platinum printing. And so anyway, she's a really extremely interesting photographer, and I can't believe we actually haven't covered her before. But uh, anyway, without further ado, I want to take a look at some work. So let's check out the work of Imogene Cunningham. Okay, so I want to take a minute, and we're going to look at some pictures by uh, Imogene Cunningham, and I am using Pinterest for this, and for those of you who are newer to the show who don't know, I use Pinterest when I do a lot of these photo lit episodes, and the reason I do is because, one, it allows me to bookmark images, which is really handy when you're researching and putting stuff together, and two, it allows me to show them to you guys, and you can also go look at them for yourself, so if you want to go click some of these links and see some of the sources where I got some of these, there's other amazing pictures um, that we we don't really even have time to cover here, so I've just nailed it down to the essentials. So if you want to go learn more, I guess is what I'm saying, go use Pinterest. Um, you can find my account at Pinterest.com slash Ted Forbes, Pinterest.com slash Ted Forbes. And Pinterest allows you to group your images in what they call boards. And I have a whole board on here for Imogene Cunningham, which is what we're looking at. Now, this first image is not actually taken by Miss Cunningham. This is actually taken by Alan Ross, who was a student of Ansel Adams. And I, this is one of my favorite images, and I'll be honest, I've been looking for an excuse just to show this because I think it's so quirky. Uh, but anyway, it's a portrait of Ansel in the front with his Hasselblad, and that is Imogene Cunningham in the back, scowling over his shoulder. And I think what's funny about this, there's a whole series of these that, that you know, kind of have this humorous side of Imogene Cunningham. And I think that it gives you a glimpse into 
um, the sense of humor and the personalities of these two wonderful photographers. And uh, anyway, I just think this is great. And as you can see, she is pretty old in this shot. I mean, she lived to be 93. And what we're going to look at in this series of images is an entire lifetime span of work. And so she really did shoot up until she died. And you know, I think even though you're looking at probably about 70 or 80 years of work here, there is this binding sense of unity that comes. And I want to talk a little bit about that, I think, compositionally. Um, and, you know, it, it, it anyway, it'll make sense as we get into this. Um, but probably one of the most famous imaging Cunningham images is this one which clearly has all of the stylistic markings of pictorialism. And, you know, you see that with the soft focus, you see it with the way the, uh, the model is positioned, and you see it with kind of this luminous glowing light that comes off of the, the hair and some of the clothes. And it's just a beautiful image, but it's very, um, you know, kind of key to, you know, what was going on in photography in the early 1900s. And, you know, she has a couple other images that are very well known from this period as well. And I think this is another one that just is very... Uh, um, you know, indicative of pictorialism. And this, you have a blurred landscape of a lake with some trees and this almost like sketch quality to it, like it was almost drawn or painted with charcoal or something like that. And that's what a lot of the pictorialist photographers were going for, you know, and you see this echoed with people like Stieglitz and a lot of her contemporaries who were in the photo secession and, you know, some of the other camera clubs that, you know, Gertrude Keshbeer and some of these people we talked about before. Um, and she was part of that. And then, you know, later on you see these portraits and like, for instance, this is Martha Graham and this was done in the 1930s. And it's, you know, you see elements of the pictorialism school but you also see you know this evolution of going beyond that and we'll come back to the Martha Graham shots because I think they're they're worth talking about in a second when I'm going to talk about something else but she's also well known for these botanical series of, of pieces that she did and an interesting side note, when she was studying photography in school in those days, uh, it dealt a great deal with chemistry, with printing techniques and developing emulsions and, and such. And one of the ways she made extra money when she was in school was by shooting images of botanicals for the botanical department. So she really cut her teeth doing these flower types of shots. I think these are probably also, you know, if you look at the time that these were done and the time she lived in, you know, you have post Carl Blossfeld era, but, you know, probably influenced a little bit by the type of things that George O'Keefe was working on, um, you know, and such. And I, you know, they're absolutely beautiful. This one in particular, I find interesting. And I want to talk about something that I see echoing a lot in her compositions and her later work. And what we have here is this study of just some, some plant leaves. But what I want you to see is the use of, it's, it's a study with triangles, basically. If you look at the shapes and how they're kind of shown and viewed, you see so many instances of 45 degree angles overlapping in here. And, you know, this is not unique to Miss Cunningham. I mean, I think you also see this in the work of Henri Cartier-Bresson. And we talk about in the composition series that I did about implied lines and implied shapes. And I think what you're going to see is, in, particularly in some of these botanical studies, you're going to see this use of triangles and 45 degree angles. And it becomes an integral part of what, you know, Imogene is doing with her compositions, implied or not implied. So, for instance, here's a nude male figure study where you certainly see a lot of these 45 degree angles a lot of the triangles a lot of the shapes but mixed in with the form with the human form which i find simply fascinating and beautiful on a number of levels because you know it it, it combines the best of you know this triangle study with some of these organic shapes she was she was doing in her botanical studies um, another series of nudes with two females and again if you look at the triangular shapes that are going on here you know that's that's a major element of this composition i think it just to a very beautiful effect also, in another one of my favorite portraits of her, this is called Three Heads and Four Hands from 1964. So this is a lot later, but again, you see these implied triangles, and the implication comes if each one of your points in the triangle is one of the faces, so there's a point on each one of the dolls and a point on the human head, you start to see where these triangles are implied. And, I, you know, this may sound out there for some people, but I think that, you know, it fits right in with classical composition. And like I said, this isn't uniquely her, but you do see it predominantly in her work done in her way. Um, and I think it's just, it's fascinating. It's beautiful. It's, it's um, you know, it, it's just amazing. So anyway, this is a self-portrait of 
imaging. And again, you're starting to see the triangular forms here, uh, mainly in the, uh, you know, the, the lace that's on her shoulders, um, the pose, etc. Uh, I think, you know, some amazing stuff. Another interesting photo. This is, uh, I want to come back to the Martha Graham stuff here too. Um, the way these dancers are posed in midair. I think this is just a wonderful, wonderful photo. Speaking of Martha Graham, if you're not familiar with Martha Graham, she was a famous ballet dancer and teacher. Uh, one of the most famous. She was kind of the Ansel Adams name of ballet. And there was a series of photos that she had done for Vanity Fair um, in 1931, I believe. And that's what these are from. And I think, again, with the human form, with the dancer form, and again, with the 45 degree angles, which I promise not to beat to death too much in here, uh, these are just really interesting. There's a sense of emotion. Uh, there's a sense of artistic quality that comes off of what is basically just some portraits but to use somebody who basically their art form is the human figure and to work in collaboration with that, um, she just did some amazing stuff, which also included, let's see, this shot which is a double exposure. And we've talked about a couple people, uh, Harry Callahan, some others who worked in multiple exposures. And you see that in uh, Imogene Cunningham's work as well. Obviously in this shot, which I think is just brilliant. Um, one of the most famous ones was, uh, was this, which I think also is beautiful. It's the nude female figure against this organic landscape of uh, tumbleweeds and a tree. You know, I think there's a real... Oh, essence of beauty, and you know, this is actually kind of cutting edge, I think, for, for a lot of the stuff that Imogen was working with. This one I find extremely significant, too. It's the human hands uh, amidst some plants. So just, you know, this experiment with double exposure, I think, is, you know, especially at the time, that was really a cutting edge thing. You know, you have cubism going on, and, and I think a lot of the way photographers are echoing that in some ways. What's interesting about this one, which I really love, is, is you have... A double exposure, but the proportions are so radically different. And so that's what starts to play with your eye compositionally. And you have this woman who's kneeling on the floor wearing this robe and then juxtaposed with the, uh, you know, the figure study going on behind her. Uh, just some amazing work. And so anyway, so, you know, you're going to see a lot of this with, with, with imaging. And I think this is wonderful, too, the shadow of a birdcage and the small boy next to it, where you really start to get, you know, some of the things that were started with pictorialism, but they're continuing to tell a story with composition. And I think that's amazing. Um, another, I'm going to move on to kind of a different um, territory here. But again, you see, well, let's go back to this. I mean, one of our more famous pictorialist photos. Well, here's a little bit later example of uh, Alfred Stieglitz. And um, anyway, beautiful picture, beautiful portrait. And then a lot of the people she would hang out with and knew, like here's Frida Kahlo. Of course, Frida being one of the easiest people to shoot because she was such a beautiful human being and an amazing artist all at one time. And these are very well-known shots as well. I don't think you could take a bad shot of Frida, but, uh, but you know, not to discount imaging at all. It's another one of my favorite photos um, because there's such an implied story uh, that's going on here. And I've talked about this on the show before, but you know, one of the interesting things when you're working with photography is trying to tell a story. And I think sometimes the way this is most cleverly done is when you're doing it by what's not in the image. And to do that, you need to leave a question with what is in the image. And here we have an unmade bed with some pins, some hairpins that are on the, uh, on the sheets there. And this just creates so many what ifs and questions that that's what becomes engaging about this picture. And I think this is one of my favorite imaging pictures because of that. Um, you start to make up scenarios in your head of what could possibly be the story of how we got to this. Um, you know, and it's a really difficult thing to do. And not there haven't been a lot of people who have done it very successfully. But when they do, I mean, you know, these photographers are some of the greats. Um, these are some later portraits that she did. These are some nuns. And uh, let's see, I have another one in here, too, that's, that's pretty funny. But uh, yeah, here it is, the nun in the shades. And just simple, again, you're going to see these implied triangular shapes, but, but simple images that are just beautiful. And I'm sorry we're going way out of order here, but another multiple exposure shot. This is a portrait of Man Ray, who, you know, was one of the famous surreal artists, um, you know, of his time and uh, more than double exposure. That's many. And then, you know, completely on the other side of things, she would do these industrial landscape images. And, you know, this is one that really starts echoing the work of Charles Sheeler. And again, very much a testament and a sign of the time that it was taken. 
So, you know, what we're looking at here is a, just a huge range of work and, uh, you know, another figure study, more triangular types of shapes. But Imogene was so good at what she did. And, you know, I think one of the great minds um, in photography ever. And uh, anyway, so Joe, go check out Pinterest. You can find more of her work on your own. And uh, you can certainly click on all the links where I found these images and, and see more stuff. So anyway, that is the work of Imogene Cunningham. So that is the work of Miss Imogene Cunningham, and I hope you guys have, have taken away some inspiration on her, as you know, I certainly have. Um, I get emails from folks a lot because we do a lot of these photo-led episodes, and you know, a lot of times I get questions like, you know, how come you haven't covered Elliot Erwitt, or you haven't covered Ansel Adams, or you know, your photographer, favorite photographer's name here. And you know, the reality is, is we probably just haven't gotten to it yet. Although I do and will admit that, um, I tend to pick photographers that I think are a little more obscure in the sense that what I want to do with some of this, with what we're working on, is show you guys important work that I feel probably deserves more notoriety. And I think that Imogen Cunningham is certainly in that category. Um, you know, I think you can make a lot of arguments for things, and this is not to insult her at all because I'm personally greatly influenced. Um, but what the kind of photography, you, you know, you have people in photography who are like real extreme innovators, somebody like Man Ray, who is, you know, in this this movement of surrealism in this time and place and is really stretching the bounds of what can be done with a camera with multiple exposures or funky darkroom techniques like solarization and things like that. And they're really pushing the edge. And I think you have people that are on the other end of the spectrum that are more, um, I would say, culminators in the sense that maybe they're not pushing the envelope on extreme innovation, but they are, in a lot of ways, taking what's before them and really incorporating it into this beautiful aesthetic um, and doing some really wonderful work with that. And I certainly think that Imogene falls into that category. She's not going to be the kind of street photographer that, you know, somebody like Henri Cartier-Bresson is, and she's probably not going to be the type of botanical photographer that Carl Blasfeld was, being that they came before her. But I think what she did is, you know, the it's a catchphrase, but standing on the shoulders of giants really took what those people did as a starting point in a lot of ways and brought her own thing to it. And I just think, I really cannot say enough cool stuff about her. She's one of my favorites. Of course, this is really kind of pointless because everybody I cover on here I love. But um, anyway, but that's what I want you to get out of uh, Imogene. I think she's wonderful. Um, on a slightly related note uh, to the show, um, I am going to be in New York City in about two weeks and we're trying to plan another New York meetup. So if you guys are interested in doing that, if you haven't been before, I hope you can make it out. Or if you have done it before, I hope you can come back out and say hello again. Um, I will make an official announcement on this, so keep an eye on the on the podcast this week as soon as I have some more information. But I believe it would be that first Saturday in March, which I believe is either the first or the second. I am not looking at a calendar right now, so sorry if I have that incorrect. Uh, but I will put an announcement up on the show, so hopefully if you're in New York City, you can come by and we'll find a nice place to hang out and we can just kind of hang and talk and meet and all that good stuff. So anyway, I hope that uh, works out for somebody out there. And uh, once again, guys, this has been The Art of Photography, and thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Later. <laughs>